Hey you guys and welcome to one little corner of my art studio. I'm hanging out over here where my sewing machine is and where I do really big painting projects and um, generally it's just more tidy because I make a mess over there. But there's plenty of mess behind me. There's even a pineapple purse and we're going to talk about this pineapple because I'm kind of jazzed about it. So earlier today I posted a video about this page so you can find that. Um, in it's called um, I need to have patience right now um, so it's it's an art journaling or uh, Bible journaling process video uh, about patience or the lack thereof and I've been thinking about this pineapple all day because I've been like I've, I've loved pineapples I just love their shape they're kind of in style right now so you see them everywhere and I've always loved the little saying that says you know be like a pineapple stand tall uh, be sweet on the inside and always wear your crown. Works really well for a modern mess princess, right? And, um, but I always say be messy instead of be sweet because pineapples are messy too. And sometimes I'm just not very sweet. You can just ask my husband. Just saying. I try. Um, so I'm thinking about this pineapple thing a lot today. Um, and I did a little bit of teaching on pineapples and, um, because they become a really cool metaphor for those of us who are living um, as God's children. So let me just do a little recap. So a pineapple is more than just like a really cute little pink purse that my friend made me or a really cute little tchotchke. I see like three pineapples in my art studio right from where I'm sitting. There's one over there, there's a little candle holder over there, and there's one over on my desk. I like pineapples. So I'm like, what? what is the deal other than that cute little saying? Like, I've really kind of latched onto this for a few years now, and people now, like, know me as, like, the lady that likes pineapples. So I was like, I just was, like, on a whim. I think maybe the Holy Spirit was like, how about you look up what the, what, what it's like to grow as a pineapple? Okay, I've never been one, so let's do that. So I looked up some facts about pineapples and it was shocking. I thought pineapples grew in big clumps. I don't know. I think I think I pictured palm trees, coconuts. I don't I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I thought. But I found out that a palm not a palm tree, a pineapple plant will only produce one fruit in its life. And then that plant is no longer fruit producing, but it will send out tendrils to create new plants that are fruit producing plants. And on top of that, the pineapple also takes about a year and a half to produce a good ripe fruit. Okay, that's a crazy amount of time for one piece of fruit. That's a lot of work and effort for one plant, for one piece of fruit. Now it's a fantastic piece of fruit, but it's still, that's a lot of work and a lot of time for one piece of fruit. So I was thinking about that and I'm like, I love metaphors and I love symbols and I'm like, so why is this pineapple thing so important to me? And um, I came up with a lot of reasons, some that I talked about in my video and then some I didn't have time to mention. And so one of the things I talked about was that God, God wants us to be similar to that pineapple plant. And I really think that's true. Not that um, we just do our one job and die. No, don't, no, that's not what I'm saying. Um, it's that we, um, that God is wanting to always produce new fruit in us. And as we produce new fruit, some of the old stuff has to be left behind, right? So that God can do a new work in us. Because if we're never growing, kind of like the, the pineapple plant, growing the new tendrils to create new pineapple plants, we're just going to be like this plant sitting in the dirt, not doing much, and um, not producing fruit. And it's not like we're going to fall out of God's favor. He's not going to love us anymore. He's, he's going to totally love us. God, That's God's nature. But he wants us to grow and be fruit-bearing um, Christians. And so, and the fruit, what's cool is the fruit looks different for each of us. You know, you might be a strawberry and I'm a pineapple. And our friend over here is an apple. And the lady next door is um, a bunch of grapes. Like, we, we all get to be different fruit. But the process of how God works on us 
is similar in nature in the fact that there's kind of a rhythm and a cycle to it. He wants us to be planted and rooted in him. He wants us in good soil. There's scriptures about that. He wants to grow us up in the faith and mature our faith to the point where we can bear good fruit. And bearing good fruit is a sign of a mature faith. Now, it's not um, tried and true. Like, just because somebody's being a really good person or a very generous person doesn't mean they have a mature faith. And mature can be defined in 600,000 ways. So we're not going to go there. But um, one of the things I see about a good fruit is that um, you're walking in your gifting. There are things that God created you um ways that he created you that are just kind of overpouring naturally out of your life and that um that there's that there's there's people who um see something in you that's different when you're being your most unique self so a pineapple can't grow up and be an apple and an apple can't grow up and be a pineapple. We are, we are each wired very uniquely for um, our God-given purpose. And I think one of our best gifts and hardest jobs is to step into that purpose. Because um, sometimes finding it is really hard. Um, but God doesn't make it impossible to find. It may be like a buried treasure where maybe, maybe your best gift is um, writing, but you were always told you were dyslexic and a terrible reader, and then you find out you're actually an author? What? Or maybe you were painfully shy as a child and got in trouble all the time in school for not speaking up, and now you want to be the teacher. What? Or maybe you, um, you grew up in a household that was pretty tough, and all the examples of motherhood around you were pretty tough, and uh, not very motherly. And now you've got the heart and the compassion of a mother. What? This is our God, you guys. This is our God. I have always loved arts and crafts. I've always loved being creative. I've always known that's part of my lifeblood, but I did not think it was my calling. And right now, at least for this season, it is. God's having me in Bible journaling, which I share here, I'm painting paintings for people. I'm doing all this creative stuff on a daily basis. And I just keep telling God, wait, this is too easy. <laughs> this is too easy. Now, I'm not a gazillionaire. That's not the fruit that's coming out of this. Um, but my heart's cry has always been to connect with people and encourage people, especially women, encourage women. And I hear from your feedback on this channel that that's happening. That is better than anything money could buy in my world. Now I'm blessed to have a husband who's employed and um, so that helps a whole lot in the not needing a whole lot of money issue. But um, but I gotta say, um, it's been a long time growing this little pineapple over here named Kimberly and, um, and I'm still growing and um, but I love this idea that as we grow and produce fruit, that there are things that we're going to have to let go of. I've been in a really cool internship being interned or interning for two um, relatively, well, they'd say relative, they would say they're not very big, big time Christian authors and speakers. And, um, I have to let that go. God's asked me to let that go to pour more of my time into this channel and into creativity and into painting. And that seemed really strange at first because that was a really comfortable place for me to be. The are wonderful women who are mentoring me um, and that I get to work for. It's just incredible. But for some reason, that season, it's been a year, that season is over and I need to let that, that go. The fruit the fruit came. The fruit was um, fully bloomed. The full, the fruit um, of what I was able to give that ministry um, was completely formed. And now it's time to pass that job on to somebody else. 
and now it's time to walk in this new fruit. Now, if you're anything like me, saying goodbye is so hard. I hate endings. But there's something that brings me peace about this new metaphor, that it's not that there's something wrong or that goodbyes are always painful or or God's removing me because I needed to be removed. No, it's just a natural process of going through growth and faith in Him, is that we're going to bear fruit in one season, and then that will be done, and it's time to embrace the fruit in another season. So the challenge from this little chat is going to be, um, where, where is God growing you right now, and what do you... Sorry, Paxton makes an appearance in my videos. I'm so sorry, at least verbally. He has to chime in. I think he thinks he's a preacher. Just saying. Um, he's a 10-year-old dog. We kind of got to feel sorry for him. And he only has one eye and no teeth. So he has rights to join in, right? God loves him. God seriously loves him. That's another story for another day, actually. Remind me to talk about my dog Paxton and his story and how much God must love us if he loves that little dog. Um, and he clearly loves that little dog. Um, so anyway, <laughs> back to the challenge. Rabbit trail. Back to the challenge for you today. The challenge is to think about what season you're in and where you think you are bearing the most fruit and see if anything needs to be let go of so that you can move into this season of fruitfulness, or if you're kind of in the season of fruitfulness and savor every moment of it, or if you're kind of in between seasons and you're not sure where to go. And if you're in those in between seasons, oftentimes for me, there's a process that needs to be let go of. There's something that needs to be let go of um, that is relatively hard to trust God and let go of because it doesn't make sense in kind of this natural world and people might even be questioning you like well you've always done children's ministry why would you leave that or you've always been the choir director why would you do why would you leave that or you've always been the one that organized bunko in our neighborhood why would you stop doing that they're going to be people that are going to question what you do but when you hear from the lord it's time to move be that pineapple plant and let the old go so that the new fruit can come all right, if you like these little chats where we just kind of hang out and talk about life together, um, let me know in the comments. I had some feedback that people wanted to see more of um, kind of this conversational style in front of the camera. You'll never lose the creative piece, so no worries. Um, I love my Bible. I'm pointing to my Bible over here in case you don't know what I'm pointing to. You know, over here. Um, my Bible. I love Bible art journaling and I love art and I'm thinking about doing more watercoloring tutorials because that's really the medium I'm kind of soaking in right now and um, it seems like a lot of you are too. So let me know. Give me some feedback down in these comments um, in the comments about um, maybe doing some more watercoloring tutorials and if you like this kind of chatty thing because um, I really I like doing life together and I love doing life in community and um, I love just doing real life with you guys. This community is fabulous. So, um, yeah, let me know. And until then, you'll see my hands soon. I'll be back. <laughs> Bye.